Hello, this is the Provoke Prawn, and this is TPCast, a wireless adapter for the HTC Vive, which also, there is a version available which works with the Oculus Rift. Now you might have seen I did a unboxing video on this before. This is a video to show you the installation of all the parts, because if you look at the <laughs> unboxing video and the contents here that I'm unboxing, you'll see there's quite a lot of different things, and it seems quite intimidating at first, but actually the installation process isn't too bad once you've seen how to do it. Now in the box you have the receiver, the transmitter, the battery pack, the battery, the wires, a holster for the battery pack, a Wi-Fi router, Ethernet cables, power cables and all sorts. So you can see there's quite a lot of stuff going on there. And you take it all out and it's a bit like, whoa, there's a lot going on here. This is going to be quite a lot to do. But it's actually not too bad. Now, so I'm going to quickly talk through the steps. The first step is to remove the front panel on the HTC Vive. That basically involves pressing down and pushing forward on that. That gives you access to the cables and where they connect. You then need to remove those cables. So that's unconnecting the HDMI, USB, power, and audio cables from the front of the HTC Vive. Obviously, in this video, I'm doing it with a standard head strap, but the same sort of process applies with the deluxe audio strap. You then need to remove the cables from that cover and from the strap itself. It's quite an easy process. It basically involves pulling them out through this loop and then through the back. It's a bit of a fiddle and a faff, but it's not too bad. Now, once you've done that, you then need to remove the cover itself from the strap as well. And you can see at the back here, it's uh, the cables are actually looped in underneath there as well, so you have to pull those out through that. Do hang on to those cables because they will be used again later on. You need them to connect from the link box, which is attached to your machine, to the transmitter which sits near a base station as I'll demonstrate later yes, and transmits to the receiver this. on top of the headset. So remove that loop from there and then you basically got the headset completely detached with just and the these. cables. Now inside the box you'll see there are two cables, main cables, one with uh, long bits of uh, attachments, long length to it and it has a HDMI, USB and power cable on it. Those need to replace the cables you've just taken off and go into the underneath of the receiver. Now this is from back to front, so the TPCast logo sits at the back of the headset and you feed the cables through underneath through these loops through to the front and then they'll get replugged back into the headset itself. That is basically going to sit on top of your head. So although this is a wireless adapter, obviously it still requires wires to some degree. But what it does is it gives you the freedom to be disconnected from your computer so you're not tethered constantly and feeling the tug. And instead the signals are transmitted. Now the router transmits the audio and the transmitter and receiver deals with the video side of things. So you've got to then reconnect this to it. This part is now about reconnecting the receiver and the cables with it. So you need to feed the strap through first so that you can then reconnect it to the headset. So it looks like this. Then Once that's done, you can then put the cover back on. And then obviously feeding the cables back through the cover and plugging them all back in again. So. The difference here is you can't tighten the head strap as easily now. The receiver's on, so it's important to get that sort of right before you try and put the headset on in the first place. You can feed it in underneath a little bit, but it's a bit more tricky. Uh, you still get the adjustment on the side strap, so I didn't have any problems with the comfort of the fit. Here. So the, the labels on the cables show you where the cables are meant to plug in. You can see it's clearly labelled 1C, 2B and things like that and that shows you. There's a diagram but it also helps because you can see the labelling both on the devices and on the thing itself. And yeah. the reattaching by feeding it through. 
So you can see we've got another little cable that plugs into the receiver that sits on top and then that, all of those cables then plug into the front of the headset. Obviously audio is a separate concern whether you've got your own headphones or you're using a deluxe audio strap. The audio plugs in in the same place in the little corner there with a 3.5mm jack. Found this through through me off a little bit as you can see, trying to install the cables there because there's a slight bend in it. And obviously you don't have the labels on the vibe, but you can't plug them in the wrong place because there's HDMI, USB and the power cable. It's impossible to plug them in wrong because they're all a set size, so it's relatively easy to do. And then if you've done it wrong, as I had in this video, you're meant to feed them through the cap first of all. So I did that completely wrong. I'll just pretend that didn't happen. Learn from my mistakes. Fit them back in through the cap first. This was my first time doing this and I was actually reading the instructions. Following the instructions while trying to do video and take photos. If you're wondering why the camera is there, it's because I've taken photos for an article I was writing to go alongside of this video. Now in order to fit the catch back on you need to pull it right forward because there are some connectors at the front which you need to get that over. If you look carefully you'll be able to see where those are but you have to pull it really far forward, pop it down and then push it back in again. Sure those are all in tight. I also recommend making sure the cables are all fitted properly beforehand because it's a bit of a flat to take it apart again afterwards. You should hear a nice click when it goes into place. Then you have the final thing with just the cables coming out the back of it. So those don't plug into your computer, they plug into the wireless battery pack, which has the receiver for the audio on it. The next step is to set up the battery pack. This is a 21,000 milliamp battery from Anchor, which comes included in the box. You'll see it has two connections on top and it charges by a micro USB. It does take like 10 hours to charge, so it's worth charging beforehand. And then it just plugs simply in. Once that's in, you can see the LEDs on it give you show, show you how much power it's got. The power cables then connect from the back of the headset where we've um, put them through the receiver and into the top of this device. Again, they're labeled. You can see they're nicely labeled. One E, one D, and they plug in there. It's as power. And that is what gives you your power, so you no longer need to be connected. You also get a nice little carry bag and a strap, which I found you can either wear as a belt or you can throw it over your shoulder, which is what I do. Now, the battery pack is quite heavy, which is one downside to it, but it doesn't have the same tug. You still get that wonderful freedom, which you'll see at the end. This is the transmitter. So the link cables, which is the cables that connected from the link box to the headset, now connect to this transmitter. You can see it only plugs in the HDMI and the power. It goes from the link box in the same way you would plug in your Vive normally. And then it plugs into that little box that then does the transmission to the headset and allows you to play. Now, TPCast recommend putting this in a high position. I found putting it up near the base station on a little tripod was handy, but you could also put it on a bookshelf or something nearby as long as it's high and it can see the same areas. I found it worked like this, but you can also make it face the top of it face outwards. That gives you the best signal possible. Now, obviously, it does require more wires across the room. And but the end result is here. It is. You can see. You can see it still has wires. Now I have to free them. Thanks to the transmitter, which is over here and the base stations, which probably should be near the base stations, but the base stations are there. And then you need 
this router which does the legwork but I can confirm that I'm currently walking around 100% free just to uh, demonstrate that let's put this um, on the microwave <laughs> so we're at a location that you can see excuse the mess freedom danger of which is I can now bump into everything not really around still got the cable but it's not tugging at you and one thing is it's quite heavy because it's quite hefty but oh my god it's amazing it's actually so you can put the battery in your pocket, which is one way of doing it, as you can see I was here in this video, but it is worthwhile using a strap. You'll also see I missed a step out in the video, but that basically involves plugging the router in. The router just needs to be connected to your PC via Ethernet. And there you have it, TP Cast Wireless Freedom. Easy to set up, really brilliant to use. It's so good not being tethered to a machine. You are limited to the base stations and what the base stations can see where you can move in the room. But it is pretty awesome and it does give you that flexibility to move around a bit more without being tag tugged at constantly, which I find really frustrating with the five. And there you go, TP cast, well worth checking out. Brilliant little device. Really good actually. So exciting. Wireless free.